Uh, during the previous break, I heard a discussion outside uh, a couple of people saying that they would never support a carbon tax. And I think the tax word is a little scary. So could you talk about fee and dividend as a, a possible alternative to carbon tax? Um, so, so I should say I'm not an economist uh, with no financial training of any kind. I think what's important is to capture the social cost of carbon. I think if you present it to people as a cost, then it's easier to understand because you're paying it anyway. This is the whole point. Yes, there are countless think tanks out there that I'm sure can come up with the right words to use, but it's the principle of the thing. We are paying that cost already. We just don't know it. If we knew it, we would make smarter choices. People aren't all as stupid as we think they are. We'll make the right choice if we actually see what it costs to be burning that carbon. And the way you do that is you monetize it. You have different options. You can put solar panels on your house and pay 10 cents per kilowatt hour for your electricity, or you can, with that social cost of carbon added, you'll be paying 20 or 25 cents per kilowatt hour, and what are you gonna do? Obviously, you're gonna put solar panels on your house. It just makes the, 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 the decision so much easier, and the market solves the problem for you from, from within, rather than trying to enforce it from above and saying, you've gotta stop burning that coal. Um, I got involved with the issue of global warming, or because I heard about the fact that um, at wind, term, wind farms, um, they're not, the EPA decided not to, um, for 30 years, they're not going to fine the companies for the death of the birds that are there. And that was very unusual. There were protests by animal welfare organizations, but it, it, it basically there will not be penalties on people who kill uh, preserved, protected, endangered species. I also, um, got, I also found out that it's very hard now to judge the cost in terms of bird and other animals' deaths. Um, there are about 400,000 in the United States a year. There are hundreds of millions of birds that have been killed. And um, that troubles me deeply. Sure. Okay, okay. also, uh, you're talking, that's, that's the wind farms, these mm -hmm. miles and miles of killing fields. Uh, also, um, in the solar, um, solar tower, this that 70 foot, uh, uh, 70 uh, stories high, that they cost that taxpayers 2.2 billion dollars. Um, not when before it was even opened, there were um, very uh, uh, quite a number of incidents of birds' deaths because they flew into the mm -hmm. the mirrors and were were then um, fr uh, fried at 1,000 degrees when they fell. In, when they fell. And also, um, it's, they, the environmentalists didn't realize that they were in, that the birds migrate in migratory fields. Sure, okay, I think I get the gist of the question. Okay, but let me just say the rest of it. That, okay, that's what troubled me. My heart aches, my heart breaks for that. But I also, I then, because of that, I looked into the research myself. I am a PhD from Cornell. Um, I, and I didn't see at all any consensus. I think it's very simplistic. And so when you speak, which is you know, well presented, I don't buy it at all. And somehow I feel that you're, you're trying to sell it to me. You're, not, you're discrediting anybody who, who doesn't agree with the government approach. And that troubles me greatly because as a scientist, science is so much bigger, so much grander, so much more intricate, so much more, the, the universe is so complex, and to, to, and to sort of then pin it on the fact, well, it's carbon emissions, and we gotta change it, and everything has to happen, is, is an insult to my intelligence, and I think, a, okay. a, and travesty I, to the world. I think I understand the question, so let me address the wildlife impact first. So any technology that is rolled out on the kind of scale that energy technologies roll out at are gonna have negative environmental impacts, unavoidable. Another one that she didn't mention is solar farms, Great place to put them, big utility scale solar farms would be out in the desert, right? Because there's lots of sunshine and there's no people there, so it's not in the way. But there are other things there like the desert tortoise. And the desert tortoise is an endangered species. And if you build a bunch of solar panels over their habitat, you're gonna kill desert tortoises and that's obviously not a good thing. People know this. The people who are in the renewable energy community are motivated by this problem. They don't want to kill birds, right? But you have to consider what are our, our alternatives. We're, we need that energy. That's just, we have no choice. That energy is gonna be used no matter what we do. So where are we gonna get it from? If it's not gonna be from wind and solar, it's gonna be from coal and natural gas. And if we do that, it's gonna cause all the problems that I just discussed. So 
yeah, there's going to be some negative environmental impacts, and we try and minimize those. So, for example, in siting solar farms, uh, the Bureau of Land Management, it's the part of the federal government that owns lots of land, especially in the southwest, they would like to lease that land to power companies to build a utility-scale solar farm so that they could get more renewable energy out there. Um, but to do so, those companies need to do an environmental impact analysis, and they look at all kinds of stuff. So wildlife impact is just one. You look at how you're affecting water resource issues, you look at paleontological questions, whether you're infringing on Native Americans' rights, uh, aesthetic things, you wouldn't cover the Grand Canyon with solar panels. I mean, there's dozens of parameters that are analyzed. And what they do is they identify the regions where you'd have the smallest environmental impact, and those are the places where you get the lease to build the utility-scale solar farm. And it may still have some small negative environmental impacts, but I guarantee you, it's a hell of a lot better for the environment than the alternative, burning the coal, which causes all these other problems, not just climate change, but all the other problems, those miners dying under the ground, uh, black lung disease that coal miners get. I mean, it's just an awful, dirty thing. The asthma attacks, everything else. There are a million reasons, even beyond climate disruption, for, to stop using fossil fuels. They're just dirty, terrible things. And in fact, they're really useful for other stuff. Think about how much stuff that we use that's made out of plastic or our pharmaceuticals that we use to treat our diseases, many of these things actually come from petrochemicals, from oil, originally. We're burning that stuff, it's stupid. This stuff is enormously valuable for us, right? We're gonna need that stuff to make the materials and, and other high-value commodities that we need. We shouldn't be burning it, we should be using small amounts of it to make the stuff that's really important to us for our lives and get our energy from somewhere else. Now, in terms of the consensus question, I mean, I showed you the data. The fact is that the temperature is rising, that's undisputable. And the fact is that we can measure directly that that uh, temperature is rising because of the greenhouse effect. And we can attribute that greenhouse effect increase specifically to carbon dioxide coming specifically from fossil fuels. All of that is inarguable uh, evidence in the scientific literature, peer reviewed by literally thousands of, of people through the IPCC process. So there's really just, as I showed you, no debate in the community. There's no conspiracy. 97% or 98% of climate scientists don't all get together secretly in some basement somewhere and like come up with a way to fool the whole world about what's happening. They're scientists, they're trying to figure it out. We would love it if this were not what was causing it. If, th if there were a, an answer that didn't involve changing our entire energy infrastructure, that would be awesome. Unfortunately, this is the truth. This is what we're faced with and we need to face it. Steve, have the externalities of fossil fuel been actually worked out? And if so, um, it would be fascinating to add that amount that you've been talking about onto the electricity bills. Mm -hmm. ha has that work actually been done? I'd love to know because I'd use yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, so there are a number of economists out there who specialize in this topic and they try and come up with what is the so social cost of carbon per, yeah. they do it per uh, ton of CO2 emitted yeah. into the atmosphere. It's scary that the unit is tons, but that's what it's in because we're talking about a gas which doesn't weigh very much. Um, and those numbers range over big ranges, of course, economists, just like anyone else, are going to have their own you know, opinions and ways of calculating. And then ranges everywhere from sort of in the range of maybe $10 a ton up to like $100 a ton, and you'll get different economists making different arguments. And of course, those numbers will rise over time, too, because as these effects become more severe, the costs become more severe. By the way, the costs we're talking about are in the trillions of dollars associated. That's what the economic cost is projected to be by, um, by economists on this. And incidentally, the insurance companies know this too, uh, and they're looking at this very seriously, and these are not tree huggers, right? These are people who care about dollars, and they know that this is going to be a huge cost for all of us, and they're looking at it very seriously. Yeah, so I think when we talk about this, we, we should um, give an amount and say $50 a ton or whatever. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. People have done that, and, and there, yeah. have been, there have been... Um, proposals put forward by various governments around the world mm. with specific numbers in them. So when you, when you draft legislation, you usually put a number on it, yeah, whatever so that is. So we need to actually implement that by law, don't we? So yes. people understand how bloody, oh, sorry, how expensive electricity actually is from That's right, that's fuel. the whole idea, is we're paying it. It's not, yeah. it's not costing you any more yeah. to, put that, put, to put that cost there. You're paying it. You're just paying it through ways you don't realize. They're, they're, we're, we're all fools, right? We're paying the money for some other way. It would be like going out and you know, buying a TV for for uh, $200 and then driving down the street and giving another $200 to the dentist. It just makes no sense. We're spending all this money that we don't even realize to other sources. What would you recommend the average person to do um, to help with this? I was thinking uh, solar panels, but they're very expensive. My in-laws got them almost 10 years ago, and I, I'm sure it's gone down, but I think they paid 180000 
That, it's gone way down, I can well, tell you that. Well, that's good. <laughs> um, so about roughly how much for a 3,000 square foot house would solar panels be? And if you believe in electric cars, I've also seen data that the, the batteries in Priuses to make them emit are more dangerous to the environment than the savings of not emitting the carbon fuel. I, I think is that true? I think the analysis you're referring to is back when they used nickel metal hydride batteries. So I used to drive a, a Prius with, which had the nickel metal hydride batteries and that, what, that was not a very environmentally friendly process to get those materials. They're now lithium ion batteries which aren't as, as bad for the environment. Are they, um, are they made though? I heard they were made uh, overseas and then the shipping to, to ship them over yeah, here. Yeah, so the right way to analyze that is doing what's called life cycle assessment where you look at the materials all the way from the extraction of the raw materials from the earth wherever that's where our raw materials come from from, right? We mine the materials and then you process them and manufacturing and transportation, all of those things have environmental impacts and take energy and everything. And there are all kinds of experts out there, not including myself, um, who um, know how to do that quantitatively to really say what, you know, how do you quantify all those different environmental impacts and how much energy went in and everything so that you can find where the problems are and fix them. And there are people who do that for all these different energy technologies from electric cars to, to solar panels to everything else. Um, now what, what uh, uh, people can do, we're actually going to have a panel, I'll advertise uh, later this evening, Helen and John and myself and, and another author um, are on a panel later this evening called uh, Plan B where we'll address exactly this, sort of what are the things that people can do. So you'll get a broader answer to that if you, if you come to that panel, but just quickly uh, to answer your question about solar panels, which is just one thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't cost you $180,000. Now if for a typical home, my parents actually just put solar panels on their house uh, last year, and you're talking now in sort of the 15-ish thousand dollar range for your typical American home. Um, and there are lots of subsidies available to help you with that. But um, I wanna add that there are other models. You don't necessarily have to put the panels on your house. So one thing, some homeowners just, some homeowners just can't afford that. But also, some homes just aren't conducive to it. You might have trees that shade your roof, for example, and so you can't put solar, but you don't wanna cut the trees down, that would not be good, right? Um, but there's a new model that's really emerging called community solar. And I really like this idea, and it's taking off from a business side as well, which is um, you get a people in a neighborhood collectively to own uh, subscriptions to a solar farm that is in like a, a parking lot or something in the neighborhood. So a nice open space where you can put an, a, a nice big array, and then you also get economies of scale. It costs less per panel if you buy more of them at a time. And then people can subscribe to it just like you would to the power company. Instead, you're subscribing to the power from that solar farm. So you don't have to buy the panels yourself. You're just buying the electricity, but you know it's coming from those solar panels. It's a way to, it's just one of the economic models that's out there. There are countless other ways. There are people have looked at um, uh, making it more affordable for homeowners to do this. There's a big company called Solar City, for example, where they own the panels. Even though they're on your house, they own the panels and you buy the electricity, things like that. Great. And then the, so, yeah, yay or nay on the Prius? Yes? <laughs> uh, I, any car that gets higher miles per gallon is gonna, in, in net, be, be beneficial, but you're absolutely right. Just like with food, you wanna be local, right? It's better to have things that are manufactured closer to you and they use the smallest amount of you know, toxic materials. And it's not always the materials in the thing itself that are toxic, but sometimes the process of getting those materials involves right. uh, toxicity. So a, a classic example is gold. Gold is, uh, completely non-hazardous. You can eat gold and it won't hurt you, literally. I mean, people in fancy restaurants, they do eat gold, right? <laughs> but, uh, but to mine gold, uh, you have to do some bad things to the environment. So gold, even though in and of itself it's not toxic, has a toxicity effect on the environment. And you can figure that all out when you do this life cycle assessment I was referring to. Okay. There's a whole body of literature out there about that if you're interested. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.